very warm welcome to worship this morning on behalf of the Gloucestershire Methodist Circuit. Today we're thinking about our call to journey with Christ into an unknown future. Christ is our light. His spirit is with us. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, let us keep silence together as we acknowledge before God those things in our lives and in the life of our world for which we need to say sorry. God the Maker forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness and confess our sins to God, our Redeemer. When we have forgotten that you are the creator of all, the beginning of everything, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. When we have not recognised you in our sisters and brothers in Jesus, when we forget that we are Christ's body, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. When we have forgotten that you live inside us, that we are the home of the Holy Spirit, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. When we have forgotten that love is the most important thing in the world and that you show us the wonder of love as creator, son and spirit. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy.
There is now no condemnation for those who live in union with Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. This is our salvation. This is our forgiveness. Let us live by this faith. Amen. Our reading today is taken from Hebrews 11, selected verses, and the beginning of chapter 12. Listen for the word of God. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith, without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one, and therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who, for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. My recent sabbatical involved lots of trips. I went to Manchester, I went to West Yorkshire, I went to the Midlands, to Norfolk, to Sussex and to Devon, to name a few. Re-engaging with friends uh, not seen in years has just been truly wonderful. And after staying for a, a while in each place, I returned home. Following a trip, you always come back. A trip is not a journey, though the two are often confused. A journey is intentional, purposeful, and has some destination in view. The destination itself may not be a place, 
and it may not be clear. But one sets out on a journey in order to ultimately cease journeying and to arrive and likely to stay. On a trip, you always come back. On a journey, you may not. Well, we have all experienced differences in our journeys of faith to get to this point. And in recent times, our faith has been tested as we have and as we continue to live through turbulent times when things will never be what they were and we do not know yet what will transpire. And this makes life difficult for us, uncomfortable, fractious. We don't always agree with each other and that's natural. Sometimes we respond from a place of fear or with aggression or timidity. So today I want to remind myself and all of us to see with the eyes of Christ and in each encounter with each other on the journey to speak and act as if to Christ himself. The men and women for whom Hebrews was written were also facing an uncertain future. And the writer wanted to encourage them to be faithful to Christ at a time when discipleship would be costly, when the future looked bleak by all accounts and was ultimately unknown. They are reminded that through Christ they possess the blessings of the new covenant made real in bread and wine. They are reminded that they are the heirs to the utterly reliable promise of God. But they are weary, weary of the turbulent times of sustaining their commitment to Christ. And that is why in chapter 10, the chapter before the one we just heard, the writer reminds them of their former witness and urges them not to throw away their boldness. What then follows is a list of exemplary witnesses to an enduring faith, a demonstration that faith is essentially determined by hope. The writer maps out the life of Abraham and declares that throughout the history of salvation, approval from God has been based upon evidence of a living faith which acts in complete trust of God's promises, even when the realisation of those promises is not in sight. This is a dynamic, living faith, moving beyond disappointment and suffering and not afraid of failure, nor afraid to let go of the past. This is a faith which testifies by example to future generations, to our dear children and their children, the reality of belief in promised blessings. Now, Abraham lived in the highly civilised city of Ur, a rich and fertile place watered annually by the flooding of the Euphrates, and it stood alone within a vast desert. Yet Abraham took a huge risk, obeying God's call and stepping out from the city into that wilderness. He left what he knew, what was safe, and all that gave him comfort and a sense of belonging. The details were unclear to Abraham, but the faith he had in the God who called him compelled him to respond. His pilgrimage 
led him to alien places, uncomfortable and new challenges. He became the stranger, the guest in others' lands. But no matter, he believed in and anticipated the promise of God. For he was looking forward with certainty to the city which has foundations because its designer and creator is God. Abraham journeyed from one city to another. He exchanged a life of settled comfort for an existence marked by hardship and wandering in pursuit of the promise of God. And this kind of faith is directed towards the future, the forward-looking capacity of faith, which enables a person or a community to advance courageously and confidently into an unseen future, supported by the word of God and the spirit of Jesus. Well, friends, it's rarely been more crucial in the life and history of the church to seek to see with the eyes of Jesus, to lift our gaze and watch in the moment for the certain call from God to promises that we can utterly trust. The current visioning process of the circuit places many challenges before us. The journey continues of di as different things come in and out of focus and the vision is not yet fully known. But one thing is certain. We have been changed by the last 18 months or so and we are called to discern what God is calling calling us to now. We're on a journey together. We are to run the race with perseverance. So let us always take the time to pause and think and pray before we react and respond. Let us remember to watch with the eyes of Jesus. Let us lift our gaze and fix our eyes on Jesus, imitating his faith and trusting in him. For he is both pioneer and perfecter. He sits beside and simultaneously goes ahead. He leads the way on this journey and his enthronement in heaven secures the promises of God. Faith boldly looks to the future and acts in the here and now, trusting that the future is certain. It is guaranteed by the promise of God who looks us in the eyes and who cannot lie. we come to you to receive the food of your holy word take your truth planted deep in us shape and fashion us in your likeness that the light of Christ might be seen today in our acts of love and our deeds of faith speak 
O Lord, and fulfill in us all your purposes for your glory. Teach us, Lord, full obedience, holy reverence, true humility. Test our thoughts and our attitudes in the radiance of your purity. Cause our faith to rise, cause our eyes to see your majestic love and authority. Work of power that can never fail. Let their truth prevail over unbelief. Speak, O Lord, and renew our minds help us grasp the heights of your plans for us truths unchanged from the dawn of time that will echo down through eternity and by grace we'll stand on your promises and by faith we'll walk as you walk with us. Speak, O Lord, till your church is built and the earth is filled with your glory. Let us pray. Gracious God, whose spirit helps us in our weakness and guides us in our prayers, we pray for the church and for the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Renew the life and faith of the church, strengthen our witness and make us one in Christ. Give us courage to reach for the future, to go on the journey, trusting in your promises, ready for change, filled with hope rooted in faith. Grant that we and all who confess that Christ is Lord may be faithful in your service and filled with your spirit, that the world may be turned to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the nations in the ways of justice, liberty and peace, and help them to seek the unity and welfare of all people. We pray for the country of Afghanistan, for the thousands displaced from their homes and families, for those who have lost their lives. And we pray for the country of Haiti and for all those affected by the trauma of earthquake. Wherever there is suffering and distress, may the world respond with urgency and generosity. Give to all in authority wisdom to know and strength to do 
what is right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort those in sorrow, heal the sick in body or in mind, and deliver the oppressed. In the silence we keep, we call to mind those for whom we have a special concern this day. Grant us compassion for all who suffer and help us so to carry one another's burdens that we may fulfil the law of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks and praise for all who have served you faithfully here on earth and especially those who have revealed your grace to us in Christ. May we and all your people share the life and joy of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us to pray saying our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be. image we are made, strengthen us in our struggle, embrace us in our weakness, and inspire us with hope for the future as we work together for the kingdom flourishing. Amen. <laughs>